Welcome back to the Automated Greenhouse. This is part two. In part one, we looked at how the greenhouse structure was built, and we also discussed a little bit about how I wanted this project to work. I mentioned that I'd go into more detail of the solar panel setup, and this is what we'll discuss first. So this is the solar panel. It's in the vicinity of maybe 120 watts, and I got it for free because the frame was a little damaged. In direct sunlight, the solar panel puts out about 38 volts, but if I walk in front and shade the panel, you can see that voltage drops off. This also means that it can't provide as much power and it's not as efficient. So when I set my panel up, I wanna to try to avoid putting it in any areas that will be covered by shade. This is the solar voltage regulator and its job is to regulate the power being provided to the load by the solar panel and the battery. It also charges up the battery and when there is no sunlight or nighttime in other words, it takes the power from the battery and supplies the load. To summarize, it's regulating the power provided to the load with its two sources, the solar panel and the battery. And this is the battery. It's a lead acid rechargeable. It's rated at seven amp hours, meaning it should theoretically be able to supply seven amps for one hour or one amp for seven hours. Now I'm using my multimeter to measure the current draw on the battery and in standby it's about 150 milliamps and then once I connect the solar panel in you can see that it's trying to charge the battery. Maximum I saw was about 1.5 maybe 2 amps so that's pretty good. And my DC water pumps turned up. I got two. The 12 volts and I think the running current is about 350 milliamps. Yeah, been waiting a while for those so now I can go ahead with the watering system and of course I couldn't wait, I had to give them a test. These pumps were only about six or seven dollars each so pretty nasty and cheap but uh, they're rated at 280 litres per hour and, well, maybe it's accurate, who knows. The pumps will be submersed in a rainwater tank that I got second hand for $30. The rainwater tank is 100 litres. Um, being second hand it was pretty dirty and I had to set up the water blaster to give it a clean. Then I can fill it up with the garden hose. And now I'm prepping the DC pumps and I'm just using some old speaker cable I had to extend the connections to the pump and I'm just making sure that there's I think actually about four layers of, of waterproofing there's heat shrink on the positive and negative wire and then there's heat shrink over top of that and then I've got some uh, like rubber tape that sort of stretches and conforms around the cable and then on top of that I've put some regular electrical tape and I'm hoping that this will stop any water getting in and shorting up the contacts. Um, the pump itself is submersible, so I don't have to worry about that. I repeated this process for the other pump as well. I bought another roll of the four millimeter flexible pipe and I cut a big piece off and I'm just using some electrical tape at the moment to connect it to the pumps. I might have to come up with something more suitable in the future. Conveniently, the DC pumps have some little suction cups on and they work really well to stick it to the inside of the rainwater tank. Then I can put the hose back inside the greenhouse and plug it back into the splitters. Now I can test the pump using the battery and just connecting the cable to those terminals. And initially I just tried one pump to see how the spray would go and it's not too bad. I think for the number of sprayers it might be slightly too weak but 
In any case, it just means I might have to run it a bit longer or look at sourcing a better pump. Using the rest of the 4mm flexible hose, I terminated the last five sprayers and put the stakes into the other five pot plants. And then I could put the second DC pump in and cover up the rainwater tank. So I tried the two pumps together and I found a fault. Um, basically because the pumps are sitting at quite a high level in the rainwater tank, they're creating a siphon once the pumps turn off and basically water just continues to drip out of those tubes and doesn't stop, which is really bad. I could drown the plants or you know put way too much water into them. So I'm thinking to solve that, I'll try to find a solenoid that will close off the main line and stop that siphon from happening. And that's pretty much where we'll leave this part two. I'm still working on the electronic side and I've started by learning how to do analog to digital conversion on the microcontroller and hopefully I can scale that up to include all the features I want for this uh, greenhouse controller. Thanks for watching, please like and subscribe.